Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 71. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 8 or the PowerPoints for chapter 8, click on the link directly below the video and then scroll all the way down to the Finance Excel class section. Hey, we're talking about investment criteria. We're working on our project, right? Here's our data. We did net present value last video and we determined that this project, we should take it. Payback rule. The amount of time required for investment to generate cash flows to recover its initial costs. Right? Computation. You have to estimate the cash flows. So you're still, uh, even though it's a relatively uh, straightforward, easy rule, you still have to do all this estimating about the unknown future. Determine number of years required to get paid back. So for example, a firm says, we're not investing in projects unless we can get the cash back within two years or three years. Subtract future cash flows from the initial cost until the initial investment has been recovered. So, for example, right, project uh, gives 100, 100, 100, and uh, the original cost is 200, right? So it takes two years to recoup your initial cost of 200. So you determine in advance the payback period is two or three years. Um, I'm sorry, the payback period we calculate, but you have a pre-specified number of years, so example two or three, right? So if this is two and we pay back in one and a half years, then we take the project. If this is two and it, we pay back in three, forget it. We're not going to accept it. Now let's look at our example here. Here's our cash flow, so 160000 How many years does it take to recoup that? Year one. We take 160 minus 60, we're left with 100 still to recover. Second year, we take a hundred thousand. Uh, we subtract seventy thousand. We have thirty thousand left. So, if our criteria is payback in two years, do we accept it? No way, because at the end of two years, we still have thirty thousand dollars to recoup. So we would not accept. Do we accept or reject the project? We reject it. Reject the project and not pay with back within two years. Now we'll see how to do this in Excel. But let's just go and analyze this rule. Does the payback rule account for the time value of money? No way. It just adds up the cash, right? Does the payback uh, rule account for the risks of the cash flow? No, we don't use a discount rate. Does the payback rule provide any indication about increase or decrease in value? No, it just says how quickly we recover the cash. Should we consider payback rule as our primary decision criteria? No way. Use net present value. Here's some advantages and disadvantages. It's easy to understand, right? Cost to do this analysis is minimal. Uh, maybe it's good for small investment decisions. And actually, lots of people do use the payback rule, especially for smaller projects. Adjust for uncertainty of later cash flows. Well, pff, what? it just gets rid of them, right? You just ignore them, right? So in our example, right? The further you, out you have to go to estimate cash flows, the less certain they are about, right? But what do we do? We say year one, year two, it doesn't pass the rule. We ignore everything, all the cash flows after. This is a small example, but you know, um, if we did net present value, we clearly saw that that ninety thousand dollars helped us get a positive net present value. All right, um, um, but. Uh, an advantage, right, is that it is biased towards liquidity, right? So if it pays back quickly, then we'll accept it. Uh, tends to favor investment that free up cash for other uses more quickly. Disadvantages, ignores the time value of money, it fails to consider risk, uh, requires an arbitrary cutoff point, right? Two years. Well, <coughs> again, if there's cash flows in later years that are going to be significant, you know, that just arbitrarily cuts those off. Ignores cash flows beyond the cutoff date. Biased against long-term projects, such as research, development, and new projects. Does not guarantee a single answer. We'll see an example of that in just a moment. Does not ask the right question right, which is, does it increase equity value? And under disadvantages, right, if you have the estimated cash flows anyway, why not just take the extra step and calculate net present value? Again, people do use this. It's easy. It's straightforward. Oftentimes, they use multiple criteria. So they'll do net present value and payback, right, for example. All right, let's see how to do this in Excel. Here's our cash flows. Well, the amount left to pay back, we can simply say, I'm going to say negative this, because I want to start out with a positive, minus this. 
So 100,000 left. And then equals this. That's one cell above minus um, this one still. That's the year two. And notice this formula. I can copy this down because it will always look at the period before. And when I copy it down, it will move down to that 90,000. Clearly, right now we just go forget it. We're not going to accept this project if we're using this as our criteria. But I want to uh, copy it all the way down. And then we know just in the period it turns negative, we uh, know that sometime during this period it's paying off. Now, we want to calculate the actual uh, year and fractional part of a year. Well, let's see. 100. OK, so it's 2. But how much is left? There's 30,000. Well, let's look up here. 1, 2, the third year. right? At the end of two years, we still have 30K left. So as we're going through year three, we want to compare this to this doing division, right? 30,000 still to recoup, $90,000 coming in. We're going to assume that it's paid off at an even rate, which is not always a uh, correct assumption, but that's what we will assume. So we can simply say 30,000 divided by this. So somewhere about one third of through the third year, we're going to get uh, paid off in total. So watch this. We're going to say the two, because two years, right? And there was $30,000 left. So we say plus. 30,000 divided by the cash flows coming in during uh, year three. So that will give us 2 and 1 third, or 2, 3, 3. Right, so that's the calculation right here. This was the cash still to, to recover, that 30,000. This is the total cash for that third year. Um, all right, uh, that is the payback rule. And what would our, our decision would be here to reject? 2.33 is greater than 2. So we've decided that 2 is the years required to pay back the investment. Now uh, let's go over and look at a couple problems with this uh, payback rule. I'm going to go over to the sheet example 5.5 here. And we have three projects, A, B, and C. Here are the cash flows. Oh, in our years required to pay back the investment, we have a 2. So everything has to be paid back within two years. Um, so this project, minus 250 bucks, and then we recoup 125, 125. So there we go, 250. So we should say yes, but whoops, there's another cash flow here and here. right? So if we're going forward through these, we pay it off here. There's two locations. So the answer is yes, we should accept it. But is it year two or four? We get two answers. right? That's the problem with it. It can give you two answers. How about this situation, project B? We have 250 bucks, and then we have 100, 100. So that means no, that's 200 uh, within two years. So we say no, because only $200 in year two. But that totally ignores cash flows after year two, and those are significant. When we do the net present value here, right? there's our discount rate of 15%. We have our cash flows, and then we added our uh, original cost. That is minus, right? So we have a positive net present value. And lo and behold, we should take this project. So the payback rule um, is just has this arbitrary cutoff, and we ignore these cash flows. What about this one here? If we're using the payback rule, sure, 300 bucks. So if we have two years here, we pay off? Yes, because $300 is paid. $300 of cash is paid by year two. But again, the same situation. Net present value, when we do this calculation, uh, we have a negative. So the answer really, when we're using net present value, when we take into consideration um, time value of money, risk, and value added, this would take away value if we actually took this project um, because we used the payback rule with two. All right, that's a little bit about the payback rule. When we come back in the next video, we'll talk about the average accounting return. See you next video.